So for those of you who don't know what this is, this is the Pinter from the company The Greater Good. It's actually a home brewing kit that helps you brew uh, fresh beers and ciders from the comfort of your own home. Now as someone that's done quite a few full grain brews before, um, I know a lot of the complexities um, of brewing is actually taken out of your hands with this machine. Um, so really looking forward to, to getting it um, and looking forward to getting started with it. So let's get this baby unwrapped. Right, so here we are, the pinter inside, another easy to remove tab across the top, and there she is, look at that. Now if that is not fantastic packaging, I don't know what is. So uh, 10 out of 10 first of all, the greater good for that because that is incredible. My first look in real life at the Pinter, which is great. Oh, isn't she a beaut? <laughs> Stars and Stripes APA, our American parallel. Um, I'm going to run through what we do on here and how we're doing it face to face, but actually, you can find some fantastic instructions on the Great and Good website anyway. So make sure if you've never brewed before, um, check them out as well as listening to um, myself. So, first of all, we're going to remove the handle, which is quite easily done. You just slide it across like that. I'm going to pop that down over there, and then we flick off this back plate as well. Now, this will be um, done all the way up to the top normally, and it can be quite stiff when you first undo it, but persevere, you won't break it. Um, Anti-clockwise, and then you pop it off. And there we go. Inside as well, you'll find there's a, a small conical piece. It's crucial to make sure that is still attached when you um, connect it all back up again. So I would advise leaving it in there. Now, when purifying and sanitizing, um, they ask you to make sure that the dial is moved onto carbonated. So double check that that's on carbonated before you start. And as you can see, mine is. Now, for anyone that's brewed before, you'll know that sanitizing and purifying um, is 90% of brewing. So don't skip this stage. In fact, I'm gonna do it for a little bit longer than what it suggests on the website. So making sure, making sure you put hot water in, but only tap hot, don't boil the kettle and pour that in. And you're filling up to the line that is clearly visible inside the pinter. So nearly there. Lovely jubbly. The pinter comes with purifier. You can buy other stuff like star sand and stuff like that to purify yourself. But um, I'm gonna use what they recommend because you get one of these with every single fresh pack. So um, may as well use it. Pour the whole lot in. And then we're just gonna replace the, the lid and give it a shake. Important, and they mentioned this a few times on the website as well, to make sure that the white handle is horizontal. So it starts to give you some resistance when it's about that, you see that? About that sort of distance around. Just make sure you um, put some effort in to get it completely horizontal. So there we go. And now I'm gonna give it a shake. Now they advise for 10 seconds. Um, I'm going to do it for a bit longer and then we're going to leave it in there for longer as well. It's also got a good arm working up. 
So there we go, give it a good shake. Like I said, I recommend doing it for longer than 10 seconds. Um, I did it there for about a minute, um, which is probably fine. Now, all we need to do is attach the top of the dock, lining up arrow A with arrow one, which is nice and easy to do. And then what we're gonna do is slowly push down and wiggle it backwards and forwards until it sits nice and flush. When it's nice and flush, you're gonna give it a push round. So A is now in line with number two. Easy. Right, so now we're gonna just turn the pinter over so it's sitting on the brewing dock. Remember this weighs around about six kilos, they say, and you can hear the uh, sanitizing liquid rushing into the bottom of the, the dock. Um, they recommend leaving that for 10 seconds, but I'm gonna leave it for 15 minutes. So see you back here in 15. Okay, so that's been sat there for 15 minutes. Um, so through the advent of uh, technology, you wouldn't have actually noticed that 15 minutes, um, but I did. So now we're gonna sit it in the sink. And all you do is hold the bottom left-hand corner and twist with the top like this until it pops off. And you'll see some water released there, which is fantastic. And then let's pop it on the side so we can put the handle back on. So we've got the handle, we're gonna put the handle on now and just run some of this sanitizing fluid through the actual front of the pinter. Okay, it says for five seconds, gonna do a bit longer. I've got the sink in because what I'm gonna do is sterilize some of my other equipment that I'm planning on using. So I'll let that run through. Fantastic. Let me pop the handle off and we're gonna open it up again and then just pour all of the liquid out of this and out of the brewing dock as well into the sink. Now the yeast um, you can pitch straight into the, the pinter, but what I've actually done is pre-boiled some water. Um, I've sterilized my thermometer so I know that it's down to 30 degrees. And I'm just gonna pop that in there just to let it hydrate. And I'll pour, let's take the cap off first, um, and I'll pour this straight into the pinter after it's hydrated for a few minutes. Now, um, it's best to leave it for about half an hour, but I am going to um, leave it for about five minutes, just give it a little stir around in there. Do not do this if you haven't sterilised the, uh, the thermometer or used boiling water um, in there because it can introduce bacteria to your beer. So now we're going to fill back up with water, so just from the cold water tap up to the middle of the line inside. So nice and easy. Get excited now to get to uh, pour the fresh press in in a second. Now, different to the instructions online, what I'm actually gonna do, um, and again, um, only because I know I've sterilized all of the equipment, is I'm actually gonna pour out um, a little bit into my flask so I can test the gravity of it. Testing the gravity just means that I'm able to tell the alcoholic strength, the ABV, um, when it has finished brewing, which I'd like to do. Um, but to do that, I've got to put the fresh press in, shake it up, um, draw some out and measure it before I actually put the yeast in. So there are some additional risks with infection doing it that way. You can actually get these fantastic things online called eye spindles, I think they're called, um, on, uh, on eBay as a guy that makes them. Uh, and if you sanitize them properly, calibrate them properly, they actually sit um, in your pinter or if you're, if you're doing it in a carboy or something like that um, and constantly give you gravity readings to your phone and temperature readings. So they're pretty cool. Um, I haven't got one myself, but it's one of those things that um, I'm sure I'll buy. They weren't around um, when I was doing uh, my all grain brewing um, previously, but they would have been an absolute joy um, if I'm being completely honest. So nearly there, halfway, double check that. Measure twice, cut once, and I'm not cutting anything, but I've got to have some sayings to do at this point. So that's that done. So lid is going on. So Stars and Stripes APA, um, 
Let's get this bad boy undone. Let's get it in there. Just going to sprinkle the top of this with some sanitizer fluid just to make sure there's no nasty bugs on the outside that can make it into the beer. Again, like I said, brewing is 90% cleaning. And if you're an actual company, 90% cleaning, 10% working out the tax you've got to pay. Right, let's get all oh, that. Smells so good. Let's get it in there. So this is essentially a condensed wort. To make sure you get it all in there. Temptation is to rinse this out and give it a shake and get some more in there, which I might just do a little bit of, just to make sure it's all in there. It's coming out quite nicely, so I, I might not give it a shake around, just because again, the uh, the more you do outside of the instructions, the more you play around with it, the more chance there is of infections in your beer. And believe me, a simple infection can make an entire batch taste disgusting. In a uh, homebrew competition that I entered a number of years ago. Um, I scored a terrible mark because the uh, the beer just tasted like uh, gone off vegetables. Um, delicious, and apparently that wasn't one of the categories. Who'd have thought it, eh? So just going to give this a little rinse with the sterilising fluid because I have been touching it. And then let's get the lid on. Like I said, I'm going to give this a shake up um, for longer than they suggest, and then I'm going to draw some out so I can get a gravity reading beforehand. Make sure it's on nice and tight. Again, make sure the handle is at horizontal. Shut this bad boy out a bit further. So I'm just going to give this a shake for about a minute, just to make sure that's all completely mixed up, and then I'll uh, draw some out for a reading. At least the least amount of beer I can. You never want to be known as a beer waster. Lovely. So with the hydrometer, you just give it a spin and let it settle, and then you take your reading. One point zero five. Brilliant, so I'll jot that down and then what I can do is take a reading when it has been sat conditioning for a while um, and I'll be able to then work out online using a calculator because it's a formula I do not know off by heart um, and we had to work out what the ABV is, so fantastic. So now I'm gonna pitch my yeast in that I've let sit and hydrate. So all of that goes in there, lovely jubbly. Let's get the lid back on. Now it's really important, so obviously we've already given it a shake um, to begin with when we first put the water in. Normally you could, you'll put the yeast in at the same time and give it a shake. It's another really important stage to aerate it as much as you can um, to give the uh, yeast the best opportunity to breed and produce that lovely flavour and lovely carbon dioxide. Right, is that perfect? Yeah, lovely jubby. So here it goes for another 60 seconds shaking. See you in a minute. So all you do then is put the dock back on the top exactly how you did for sanitizing. So the um, A above the one arrow, slightly push it down over the two arrow. Um, took a couple of pair of hands to do that, to be honest with you. Um, but we got there in the end. And then all we do is turn it up completely. We're now going to stick that in our um, dining room, so around about 20 to 22 degrees. It's double insulated, so um, small changes in temperature are not going to fluctuate, or fluctuations in temperature, sorry, are not going to change the temperature of the liquid inside hugely. But what you don't want to be doing is dropping it 
um, soup, you know, down low for a long period of time and then warm for a long period of, period of time as well as disturbing it constantly. So try and find somewhere nice for it to sit. Hi guys, so we've been fermenting for five days. We're now going to take the dock off um, and uh, see what that's looking like. Hopefully there'll be a bit of an eruption with some of the... Um, beauty oh -hoo -hoo, that's what I like to see it's a lovely eruption there now going to stick it in the fridge to let it condition so we're going to stick the faceplate back on and the tap so let's get that in here Nice and simple, and then let's get the tap on. Now you can get some magnetic badges that go on the front, um, which I'm sure I'll invest in the, the couple of pound they are in the future, but let's get this baby in the fridge. Right, so it's time to try the beer. So we're gonna release the carbon dark side out the back very slowly. It's important not to move it too much because you don't want to unsettle the beer. If you can not move it at all, even better. Um, I'm just gonna reach around the back here slightly. I'm going to shuffle it forward. And then I will release CO2. So I'm going to do, go around slowly. As soon as I start to hear it coming out, I'll stop and let it come out for a bit longer. There we go, slowly coming out. Bit more, a bit like taking the top off a, a bit like taking the top off a uh, bottle of coke that's been fizzed up. You don't want to do it straight away. Okay. All right. Now we pour a little bit out just to get rid of the trub. So I'll do that. We'll get rid of the. Uh, the rubbish in there for the first pint. So we'll do about half a pint. Well, definitely carbonated, that's for sure. So let's bin that one. Right, and let's get the first pint out of this then. It won't be a pint, obviously. It'll be a small glass worth. There's definitely some lovely carbonation there, which is great. Let's have a look at that baby. Well, that is looking lovely, see that? Oh, I cannot wait to try some of that. Just let it settle for a little bit, um, topped it up slightly. So let's give our first taste. It smells a little bit yeasty, which is fine, because if it is a little bit yeasty, we can just leave it conditioning for a little bit longer. nice that is really nice and that is so quick and easy um, that's fantastic so we brewed it for five days we've had it conditioning now for five days we didn't do a cold crash just went five and five um, oh, I'm happy with that that's lovely cheers guys and uh, I hope you get on well with your first one we'll uh, we'll do a few more videos with some different ones and some trials and tribulations as we move along but cheers mm -hmm.